Have you ever wondered how some people seem to be calm and composed in any situation, while others get easily upset and stressed? How do they manage to act as if nothing bothers them, even when things are not going their way? What is their secret? In this video, we are going to reveal to you the secret of acting as if nothing bothers you and why this is very powerful. We are going to show you how this concept can help you overcome destructive emotions, achieve self-control and fortitude, and live a more meaningful and harmonious life. We are also going to share with you some of the wisdom and insights from Buddhist researchers, legends, and philosophers who have practiced and taught this concept for centuries. So, if you are ready to learn how to act as if nothing bothers you and why this is very powerful, then stay tuned and keep watching. According to Buddhism, one of the main causes of human suffering is attachment. Attachment is the clinging to things, people, or situations that we think will make us happy, but in reality, they are impermanent, unreliable, and unsatisfactory. Attachment leads to craving, which leads to frustration, which leads to anger, which leads to violence, which leads to more suffering. The Buddha, the founder of Buddhism, taught that the way to end suffering is to detach from attachment and to cultivate the opposite qualities of detachment, such as generosity, compassion, wisdom, and equanimity. Stay calm and balanced in any situation. Equanimity is the state of being calm, balanced, and impartial in the face of any situation, whether it is pleasant or unpleasant, favorable or unfavorable, agreeable or disagreeable. Calmness is not caring one way or the other or lack of feeling. It is not ignoring or suppressing your feelings or emotions. It is not pretending that everything is fine when it is not. Equanimity is the ability to see things as they are, without being swayed by your likes or dislikes, your hopes or fears, your expectations or judgments. Calmness is the ability to accept things as they are, without being attached to the outcome or the result. Calmness is the ability to act as if nothing bothers you, without being bothered by anything. But how can we develop calmness and act as if nothing bothers us? How can we apply this concept to our daily lives and challenges? Here are some of the ways that we can learn from Buddhism and its practitioners. Listen actively and empathetically. Active listening fosters understanding and enriches relationships, leading to profound connections both personally and professionally. One of the ways to act as if nothing bothers you is to practice active listening. Active listening is the skill of paying full attention to what someone is saying, without interrupting, judging, or reacting. Active listening is the skill of showing genuine interest, empathy, and respect to the speaker, without imposing your own opinions, beliefs, or agendas. Active listening is the skill of asking open-ended questions, clarifying doubts, and summarizing key points, without arguing, criticizing, or persuading. Active listening fosters understanding and enriches relationships, leading to profound connections both personally and professionally. When we listen actively, we can learn from others, appreciate their perspectives, and find common ground. When we listen actively, we can avoid misunderstandings, conflicts, and resentment. When we listen actively, we can communicate effectively, collaborate efficiently, and cooperate harmoniously. The Buddha himself was a master of active listening. He listened to people from all walks of life, from kings and nobles to beggars and outcasts, from scholars and teachers to criminals and sinners, from men and women to children and animals. He listened to their stories, their problems, their questions, and their aspirations. He listened with compassion, wisdom, and equanimity. He listened without being bothered by their ignorance, their delusions, their attachments, or their sufferings. He listened and he taught them the way to end their sufferings and to attain happiness and peace. Love yourself unconditionally. Embrace self-love and discern between constructive feedback and harmful negativity to nurture personal growth and authenticity. Self-love is the attitude of accepting yourself as you are, without comparing yourself to others, without judging yourself harshly, without rejecting yourself completely. Self-love is the attitude of appreciating yourself for your strengths, your talents, your achievements, and your potential. Self-love is the attitude of caring for yourself, your needs, your well-being, and your happiness. Self-love is not selfishness or narcissism. It is not being arrogant or conceited. It is not being indifferent or insensitive to others. Self-love is the foundation of self-esteem, self-confidence, and self-respect. 
Self-love is the source of motivation, inspiration, and creativity. Self-love is the prerequisite of love for others, for the world, and for life itself. Self-love also helps us to discern between constructive feedback and harmful negativity. Constructive feedback is the kind of feedback that is given with the intention of helping us improve, grow, and learn. Constructive feedback is the kind of feedback that is based on facts, evidence, and logic. Constructive feedback is the kind of feedback that is respectful, honest, and specific. Constructive feedback is the kind of feedback that we should welcome, appreciate, and act upon. Harmful negativity is the kind of feedback that is given with the intention of hurting us, discouraging us, or undermining us. Harmful negativity is the kind of feedback that is based on opinions, emotions, and biases. Harmful negativity is the kind of feedback that is rude, dishonest, and vague. Harmful negativity is the kind of feedback that we should ignore, reject, and overcome. When we embrace self-love, we can nurture our personal growth and authenticity. We can recognize our value and worth without being affected by the praise or criticism of others. We can pursue our goals and dreams without being hindered by the doubts or fears of others. We can express our true selves without being constrained by the expectations or norms of others. The Buddha himself was a model of self-love. He loved himself enough to leave behind his luxurious and comfortable life as a prince and to seek the truth and enlightenment. He loved himself enough to endure the hardships and challenges of his spiritual journey and to overcome the temptations and obstacles of his inner and outer enemies. He loved himself enough to share his teachings and wisdom with others and to guide them to the same liberation and bliss that he had attained accept the worst and prepare for the best being ready to accept the worst cultivates resilience and adaptability empowering us to navigate life's challenges with strength and composure this does not mean that we should expect the worst or hope for the worst it does not mean that we should be pessimistic or fatalistic it does not mean that we should give up or surrender it means that we should be realistic and prepared it means that we should acknowledge and accept the possibility of the worst happening without being attached to the outcome or the result. It means that we should do our best and let go of the rest. Being ready to accept the worst cultivates resilience and adaptability, empowering us to navigate life's challenges with strength and composure. When we are ready to accept the worst, we can face any situation, whether it is a failure, a loss, a change, or a crisis, with courage and confidence. When we are ready to accept the worst, we can cope with any stress, whether it is physical, mental, emotional, or social, with calmness and balance. When we are ready to accept the worst, we can learn from any experience, whether it is positive or negative, with openness and gratitude. The Buddha himself was ready to accept the worst when he taught the Dharma, the universal law, to the people who were ignorant, skeptical, or hostile. He was ready to accept the worst when he passed away from his physical body and entered Nirvana, the ultimate state of peace and bliss. Hug failure and learn from it. Failure is a crucial part of progress, offering valuable lessons, fostering innovation, and fueling determination towards success. Failure is not the end of the road. Failure is not a sign of weakness or incompetence. Failure is not something to be ashamed of or afraid of. Failure is a crucial part of progress, offering valuable lessons, fostering innovation, and fueling determination towards success. Failure is an opportunity to learn from our mistakes, to identify our weaknesses, to improve our skills, and to refine our strategies. Failure is an opportunity to explore new possibilities, to discover new solutions, to create new products, and to generate new ideas. Failure is an opportunity to challenge ourselves, to test our limits, to overcome our fears, and to pursue our goals. Keep it simple and effective. Keeping it simple leads to clarity, efficiency, and purpose, enabling effective problem-solving, communication, and decision-making. Simplicity is not the absence of complexity. Simplicity is not the lack of diversity. Simplicity is not the denial of reality. Simplicity is the essence of clarity, efficiency, and purpose, enabling effective problem-solving, communication, and decision-making. Simplicity is the ability to focus on what is important, to eliminate what is unnecessary, and to prioritize what is essential. Simplicity is the ability to organize what is complex, to simplify what is complicated, and to streamline what is inefficient. Simplicity is the ability to communicate what is clear, to explain what is concise, 
and to convey what is compelling. The Buddha himself taught the essence of his teachings in a simple and accessible way, using analogies, stories, and examples that anyone could understand and relate to. He taught the Four Noble Truths, which summarize the nature of suffering, its cause, its end, and the way to end it. He taught the Noble Eightfold Path, which outlines the practical steps to achieve happiness and peace. He taught the Three Marks of Existence, which describe the reality of impermanence, suffering, and non-self. He taught the simple and profound way to act as if nothing bothers you, without being bothered by anything. Practice Humility and Gratitude Practicing humility fosters continuous growth, strengthens relationships, and transforms setbacks into opportunities for personal development. Humility is not the absence of pride. Humility is not the lack of confidence. Humility is not the denial of self-worth. Humility is the recognition of reality, the appreciation of diversity, and the acceptance of limitations. Humility is the acknowledgement of our strengths and weaknesses, our achievements and failures, our potential and challenges. Humility is the willingness to learn from others, to seek feedback, to admit mistakes, and to correct errors. Humility fosters continuous growth, strengthens relationships, and transforms setbacks into opportunities for personal development. When we practice humility, we can improve ourselves, our skills, our knowledge, and our wisdom. When we practice humility, we can respect others, their opinions, their beliefs, and their values. When we practice humility, we can cope with difficulties, challenges, and changes with grace and gratitude. Be aware of the dangers of fortune. Being aware of the dangers of fortune reminds us to view success as a responsibility and to navigate prosperity with mindfulness and integrity. Fortune is not the same as happiness. Fortune is not the same as peace. Fortune is not the same as wisdom. Fortune is the possession of wealth, fame, power, or pleasure. Fortune is the result of luck, chance, or effort. Fortune is the condition of being prosperous, successful, or influential. Fortune is not inherently bad or evil. Fortune can be used for good or evil, depending on how we use it, why we use it, and who we use it for. Fortune can be a source of joy or sorrow, depending on how we relate to it, what we expect from it, and how we share it with others. Fortune can be a blessing or a curse, depending on how we view it, what we learn from it, and how we handle it with mindfulness and integrity. Being aware of the dangers of fortune reminds us to view success as a responsibility and to navigate prosperity with mindfulness and integrity. When we are aware of the dangers of fortune, we can avoid the pitfalls of greed, pride, envy, and attachment. When we are aware of the dangers of fortune, we can cultivate the virtues of generosity, humility, gratitude, and detachment. When we are aware of the dangers of fortune, we can use our wealth, fame, power, or pleasure for the benefit of ourselves and others, for the good of the world and life itself. The skill of being awake and alive. Success comes with unique challenges. Cultivating awareness helps navigate potential pitfalls and stay grounded in reality. Awareness is not the same as knowledge. Awareness is not the same as intelligence. Awareness is not the same as consciousness. Awareness is the quality of being mindful, alert, inattentive. Awareness is the skill of being observant, perceptive, and discerning. Awareness is the state of being awake, aware, and alive. Awareness is essential for success. Awareness helps us to recognize opportunities, to seize moments, and to create value. Awareness helps us to solve problems, to make decisions, and to take actions. Awareness helps us to achieve goals, to fulfill dreams, and to realize visions. But awareness is also essential for dealing with the challenges that come with success. Success comes with unique challenges, such as complacency, arrogance, isolation, or corruption. Success can make us lose sight of our purpose, our values, or our humanity. Success can make us forget our origins, our roots, or our connections. Success can make us act as if everything bothers us, without being bothered by anything. Cultivating awareness helps us to navigate the potential pitfalls of success and to stay grounded in reality. When we cultivate awareness, we can avoid the traps of self-satisfaction, self-importance, self-delusion, or self-destruction. When we cultivate awareness, we can maintain the qualities of curiosity, humility, honesty, or integrity. When we cultivate awareness, we can remember our mission, 
our principles, or our compassion. When we cultivate awareness, we can act as if nothing bothers us, without being bothered by anything. Maintain in the middle of success. Maintaining humility amidst success is essential. Acknowledging its transience fosters continuous growth and openness to new possibilities. Humility is not the absence of pride. Humility is not the lack of confidence. Humility is not the denial of self-worth. Humility is the recognition of reality, the appreciation of diversity, and the acceptance of limitations. Humility is the acknowledgement of our strengths and weaknesses, our achievements and failures, our potential and challenges. Humility is the willingness to learn from others, to seek feedback, to admit mistakes, and to correct errors. Humility is essential for success. Humility helps us to improve ourselves, our skills, our knowledge, and our wisdom. Humility helps us to respect others, their opinions, their beliefs, and their values. Humility helps us to cope with difficulties, challenges, and changes with grace and gratitude. But humility is also essential for maintaining success. Success can make us lose our humility, our perspective, or our balance. Success can make us think that we are better, smarter, or more important than others. Success can make us think that we have nothing more to learn, to improve, or to change. Success can make us think that we are invincible, immortal, or eternal. Success can make us lose our humility, our perspective, or our balance. Success can make us think that we are better, smarter, or more important than others. Success can make us think that we have nothing more to learn, to improve, or to change. Success can make us think that we are invincible, immortal, or eternal. Success can make us act as if everything bothers us, without being bothered by anything. Maintaining humility amidst success is essential. Acknowledging its transience fosters continuous growth and openness to new possibilities. When we maintain humility amidst success, we can avoid the dangers of complacency, arrogance, isolation, or corruption. When we maintain humility amidst success, we can cultivate the qualities of curiosity, humility, honesty, or integrity. When we maintain humility amidst success, we can remember our mission, our principles, or our compassion. When we maintain humility amidst success, we can act as if nothing bothers us, without being bothered by anything. Connect and benefit others with your success. Success should connect and benefit others. Awareness of its impact in personal relationships and professional leadership fosters shared growth. Connect and benefit others with your success. Success is not a solitary or selfish achievement. Success is not a personal or exclusive possession. Success is not a final or ultimate destination. Success is a collective and altruistic endeavor. Success is a shared and inclusive resource. Success is a continuous and dynamic journey. Success should connect and benefit others. Success should inspire and motivate others. Success should serve and support others. Success should empower and enable others. Success should enrich and enhance others. Awareness of the impact of our success in our personal relationships and professional leadership fosters shared growth. When we are aware of the impact of our success, we can avoid the pitfalls of isolation, alienation, or exploitation. When we are aware of the impact of our success, we can cultivate the virtues of connection, collaboration, or contribution. When we are aware of the impact of our success, we can create positive and lasting changes in ourselves, in others, and in the world. The responsibility of success and impact. Success is a collective responsibility. Approaching it with awareness enriches lives beyond individual triumphs. Awareness is not the same as knowledge. Awareness is not the same as intelligence. Awareness is not the same as consciousness. Awareness is the quality of being mindful, alert, and attentive. Awareness is the skill of being observant, perceptive, and discerning. Awareness is the state of being awake, aware, and alive. Awareness is essential for success. Awareness helps us to recognize opportunities, to seize moments, and to create value. Awareness helps us to solve problems, to make decisions, and to take actions. Awareness helps us to achieve goals, to fulfill dreams, and to realize visions. But awareness is also essential for approaching success. Success is not a personal or private matter. Success is not a separate or isolated phenomenon. Success is not a static or fixed state. Success is a collective and social responsibility. Success is a connected and interdependent reality. Success is a dynamic and evolving process. 
Approaching success with awareness enriches lives beyond individual triumphs. When we approach success with awareness, we can avoid the dangers of greed, selfishness, or indifference. When we approach success with awareness, we can cultivate the qualities of generosity, altruism, or compassion. When we approach success with awareness, we can see the bigger picture, the broader context, and the deeper meaning of our success. When we approach success with awareness, we can act as if nothing bothers us, without being bothered by anything. So, these are some of the ways that we can act as if nothing bothers us and why this is very powerful. By following these ways, we can learn from the ancient philosophy of Buddhism, which aims to end human suffering and to attain happiness and peace. We can also follow the example and the guidance of the Buddha, the founder of Buddhism, who acted as if nothing bothered him and who attained the supreme enlightenment and liberation. We hope that you have enjoyed this video and that you have learned something valuable from it.